The whole is more than the sum of its parts. Here's your look at the McFarlane Monsters classic characters with a horrifying twist, and this is Frankenstein. <laughs> When you think McFarlane, you think monsters. This line of action figures features McFarlane Toys' unique take on classic horror icons. Collect all six and be terrified. Before we get this review underway, the first thing we're going to do is measure off to the top of Frankenstein's monster. I may, through the course of this review, actually just call it Frankenstein. I hope you guys don't mind. I know it's the debated topic over the years. To the very top of Frankenstein's torso, well, the backpack that's on his back, you're looking at a figure standing 7.2 inches in height. That in centimeters, quickly, 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 not missing it. Oh, we missed it. Let's go back around. There we go. Whew. You're looking at a figure standing 18.4, about 18 and a half centimeters tall. Just for some size comparisons, here he is next to Dracula that we've already had a look at. Currently, I've got Dracula in what I would coin the sweet spot. Moved his legs out, pointed his feet out, and I think I've got a better, firmer footing for him. Still didn't really make much sense why he had toe articulation, but at the very least, at the very least, you can see the size difference between the much taller Frankenstein. Dracula is a little bit shorter when you compare the two. Unlike the Dracula that had the rats, the bats, and cape, oh my, Frankenstein's monster has squat. Now, that's not true. That's... It's not fair. He actually does have a backpack on his back right there, and inside is a decrepit corpse of what I could suspect to be Dr. Frankenstein. I don't know what the story would have been played out here, but I would imagine he was already dead when he was put in here. Although I don't know how Frankenstein would have designed, the monster that is, this contraption that he would have mounted onto his own back. But still, for the fact that he looks quite decrepit, makes me think that maybe he was already dead at the time. I don't know. There is some impact wounds there located on the side of his skull. And like I said, there's a really bad state that this guy is in. You want to even call it a state by this, by this opportunity. Uh, you can see his entrails, all his organs hanging out. Uh, what's interesting is there's this little tube right there, which I thought should connect to something. It leads me thinking it should connect to something, or that a tube or maybe some entrails or intestines should have connected to that. I'm not really sure what that specific hole is. Maybe you guys can tell me. Uh, really nice detailing, as grotesque as it may seem, to have all those intestines all hanging out of the body torso here of the skeleton, which really does look pretty cool. I like the fact that it's got these little hooks on the side, which again really makes me perplexed as to whether Dr. Frankenstein was alive or whether he was dead before he was put into this contraption. The hooks sort of run around to the front, and I don't know if they attach necessarily to Frankenstein Monster's actual head. I mean, they do in the figure, but again, I'm trying to play out this scenario, this story of how w whatever transpired causing this to look like it is right now. Again, really nice detailing there on the actual skeleton. I like that there's multiple different tones where you can see that there's still muscle fiber and tissue. And then there's the, you know, the skeleton remains underneath all of that. And it does change a little bit where you can still see a little bit of that on the leg and then just the bone remains of the rest of the skeleton. So it's kind of really, really neat that they would go to such elaborate lengths to create this thing of simply just not having Frankenstein's monster on his own, but the fact that they would actually find the way, a creative way, of still incorporating Dr. Frankenstein also is still as part of the setup. In a way, you're kind of getting bang for your buck, a two-four, if you will. You're getting two figures for the price of one, even though really there is no articulation or anything like that. You can't move the head because the strap is running across the head. It's nice work done there, overall. Just really, really neat. Then we get a look at Frankenstein, the monster that is. One side he does have, it kind of looks like a helmet or a mask. If you lift it up though, you can see that the eyeball has been decayed and just 
withered away, I suppose, over the age. He also has some real decay on the side of his face. I guess really all of him is decay when you think for the fact that he's comprised of human body parts that have all been stitched and crafted together. Even like his shoulder has a story to tell. I see individuals with mustaches, mustaches and ears. Could that be Mark Twain? I don't know. It probably isn't. He's got some smaller faces that have all been stitched together and a larger skull making up the rest of his adorned sort of shoulder rest. It's not quite armor, but it's just something he's draped across his shoulder. On the other side, get a little bit more armature. Uh, it looks like it's actually armor plating and it's then done in a really neat cranberry red color with some off colors of darker black and gold. Further looking and inspecting. I don't know what specifically these are. The more I like look at this, this is one of like one of those interesting aspects of figures where every time you're looking at it, you spot something new. I don't think it's actually face. I think it's just simply material, textured material that makes up the underplating. And you can see how it's been strapped across. One thing that's neat about this particular figure, if I just tip it up, is the back of Frankenstein, Dr. Frankenstein, is this piece of flesh. Now here on the back of the actual monster, you can see that it's been ripped away. I don't know, as the character, maybe he was stitched at one point to the back of the monster, and then through the time of it decaying and aging, the skeleton has just sort of peeled its way away from the torso. Really, really cool, I like that. So maybe at one point, Victor Frankenstein was literally stitched to the monster. And as he's aged and decayed and turned into this skeletal remain, uh, Frankenstein's monster actually had to craft this cage just to kind of keep it as part of him. Really, really neat. I like that. Looking at the hands, uh, you, uh, the, you got this one blade, one very sharp, sharp blade, and it's been splattered in blood. The blood is up at the top here onto his hands as well that has some hand articulation. The other hand also has blood, so I would imagine he's been fighting his way. Perhaps pitchfork-wielding, torch-wearing, torch-carrying uh, villagers have been pursuing the monster, and he's sort of been fending them off with this giant blade affixed to the side of his forearm. Some nice detailing also done to his leggings, which look like they're... You can see they're stitched on the side. They're like a darker coloring of black. This is the bloodied version of Frankenstein's monster. As a result of that, you've got all this blood sort of just very generously splattered across his body, up across his legs, up across his torso, and even across his arm where you can see some additional stitch work there where all the stitchings of flesh have been sewn together to give us Frankenstein's monster complete. Close-up look at his boots. Once again, chains. McFarlane loves his chains, and Frankenstein's monster gets his fair share. No bats, no rats, nothing hanging necessarily from these chains. They're just the chains that I guess have kept him a prisoner until the monster has freed himself. Overall, just a really neat looking figure. And might I also say, one that stands a whole lot better than Dracula. Sad that he couldn't stand properly. Uh, still though, these figures don't have peg holes on the undersides of their feet. I know that's such a small thing for me to point out, but just for the fact that there is no peg holes means that you would think that a figure company like McFarlane back in the day making staction statues in a way, they have some posability, sure, but for the most part they're just statues. You would think he would have given the collectors the afforded means to actually attach the figures to stands so that if you wanted to get them posed in the way that McFarlane has told you, he wants you to pose his statue figures at the very least, you would at least have display stands that can go along for the ride. For the articulation on Frankenstein's monster, let's go ahead and look at that right now. Head articulation, eh. I'm reluctant saying head articulation because as you rotate it, you, can, you know right away, if you turn it too much, you're going to break these posts. And most definitely when you are storing this figure away as well, this probably is going to be something that if you're not careful is going to break because like I said, it's just... It's a very thin rod of plastic, and if you're not storing it properly away the way that you got it in packaging, these are probably going to be the first thing that breaks on the figure. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news, but I like to be a realist as well. Something like that is probably going to break. Sorry. So sorry. Arm rotates up and down. This is a slightly softer plastic. It does detach, or in the sense that it attaches only to the corner here, so there's enough of a gap where you can still move the arm up. I mean, if you want to have kind of him saundering his way through the cityscape, 
the countryside, if you will, you can bring his arm up, which is probably going to be how I'm displaying the figure moving forward. The hand also rotates. He could ask for change. I would personally give him change if he's looking for it. I don't know what the change would be back then in the day, and I don't even know how that converts to Canadian or U.S. right now. But I'd probably just give the guy change. Just do yourself a favor. The arm rotates. And it feels at times that you you think looking at it that the arm hinges outward, but it doesn't. It's just the way it's on an angle. The arm doesn't move out as much as it just swivels, but because it swivels on an angle, it's misleading at times, making you think that there's actually a hinge socket in the shoulder when that's not actually the case. The forearm rotates at the cut of the bicep. The hands rotate. The waist rotates. Uh, and then the legs. You know the weird thing about these legs again? It's the same thing with the Dracula. They swivel, that's all fine and good, but really, even if you swivel them outward, you're affording some much needed footing of the figure to stand properly. To swivel the feet outward, it defeats the purpose completely. The better sense, the logical sense, is to bring the feet forward, straight, causing them to kind of be in an arched, hunched over pose. But at the very least, at least you can get Frankenstein to pose properly. Why they even incorporate this is beyond me. I'm no toy designer myself. But if the figure really isn't going to be standing no way, shape, or form with having some additional articulation added, my logic of thinking is completely just cut it out altogether. Make him staction for what he is, call him staction for what he should be, and don't call him an articulated figure. Because really, certain poses on this particular figure will result in the figure falling over. If you have the character leaning over like I have right now, you can at least guarantee proper footing. To get anything after the fact just means, well, you're going to be jeopardizing the figure falling off your shelf. So even though he has articulation right here, we know it's not really articulated because the figure is simply just going to fall over. One thing that boils my brisket. Wait, what? One thing that boils my brisket is when companies incorporate articulation that really is irrelevant on a figure. Case in point here is Frankenstein's monster or really the previously looked at Dracula. Yeah, they put articulation in the legs, in some cases the knees and the feet, but if the figure then can't stand, I would rather just take it away altogether. Don't tease me by the idea that there's articulation in a figure when you simply just can't pose the figure in that pose. So even though he does have swivel in the legs, you really can't get Frankenstein to stand properly unless you have him hunched over, like I've got here in Final Looks. One thing to also mention is he does have articulation in that swivel cut in his bicep. Yeah, it's fine and good, but it does result in the bicep unfortunately looking disjointed from the rest of his forearm. I guess it could work in theory with Frankenstein's monster, because after all, he is made up of parts. Maybe the arms shouldn't align themselves, because after all, it looks like it's probably another arm that's been stitched in place. I know that's not what their intended plan was. That's just the story I'm giving of it to justify for the fact that his bicep looks off when you swivel the arm anything other than the position of having it angled down. Still a neat looking figure. This one has stories to tell. Not to say that Dracula, no slouch is Dracula for stories to tell. I'm sure he has many more stories to tell. But there's definitely a lot to be had for Frankenstein's monster. I'm really, really interested, and I'm not just saying that either, as to what the story was with this skeleton on the back of Frankenstein Monster's torso. Was he initially stitched in place, and he just came away from the seams, causing the monster to finally cage the skeleton and carry him around for the end of days? Only time will tell. I mean, time will not tell anything because it's an older figure. Who knows what the story was behind this? Maybe if you guys have a story as to what happened with Frankenstein's monster and his master, Dr. Victor Frankenstein. Let me know down below in the comments section, or let me know what you guys think of this figure based on what you either have experienced by having the figure for your own collection or based on this review and this review alone. You can probably guess right now, and for the fact that I already told you in the other review, that we're gonna be having a look at the rest of the McFarlane monsters. After all, it is the spooky spot season, and I had to do something McFarlane related. So this year, we're going to be having a look at the McFarlane Monsters line. Classic characters with a horrifying twist. There's a lot of cool characters coming your way. Make sure, though, the key to all of this happening is the fact that you hit the subscribe button down below. Swing next door to that really gross, kind of abandoned farm farmstead. I'm sure that's where Frankenstein's monster is holding out right now. Eating rats. Maybe some of Dracula's rats. I don't know. Maybe they're getting down and hanging out, eating rats, talking stories. Dracula's asking what's going on with that skeleton on his back. 
Frankenstein's monster just goes, and then they keep eating rats. Hit that bell notification and stay tuned because certainly there's going to be a lot more videos coming your way. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Ha, ha, ha.